Hello, my name is Ryan Joy, and I'm a developer evangelist with Microsoft. You can find me on Twitter at ATXRyan, and you can also find me in the Game Salad forums uh, with username ATXRyan. And today I'm going to do a quick screencast uh, walking through the steps to actually publish a Game Salad game from my MacBook, uh, from a MacBook Pro, into the, the Windows Store. Okay? So. I've already got a game that I've modified from the template that GameSell provides, the uh, Canon Physics game. I've, I've called it Canon Fodder. Um, I've modified it a little bit in order to change the gameplay and uh, use this as an example game in order to show the publishing process. One thing I would like to call out is that I've, um, I'm targeting MacBook as my platform to give me a nice uh, display resolution. Um, you can also choose uh, Kindle Fire, uh, Landscape, or Nook Landscape, or iPad Landscape, any of these. And then you can modify your, your uh, game and scene size attributes to get something closer to a 1366 by 768 uh, resolution. I would, I would recommend as your minimum. Um, but if you don't target one of those, then your game will just letterbox and, and uh, should still work fine. But, but so here I'm targeting MacBook since there's not a a PC or a just a straight up 1366 by 768 aspect ratio. Okay, so I have already uh, done the game. I've tested it on my MacBook and now I'm ready to publish. Um, you can see I'm already signed in down here so I don't need to sign in here. I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. It is uploading my game project. Close GitHub. <laughs> Excellent. So now I was already signed in on the Game Salad website as well, um, but it's going to ask me what I like. What would I like to do? Create a new game or update an existing game? I'll create a new game. And awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice title. I'm calling my game Cannon Fodder. And then I'm going to jump into the Windows 8 stuff. So real quick, let me open up some of my notes here. Um, some of the things where, where confusion uh, comes into play with, with publishing from the game solve um, process is where we get things like the, let's see, make this smaller. Where we get things like the display name, the publisher display name, the publisher ID, the app package name, and the version number, as well as which image assets are required for publishing into the Windows Store. Um, so one of the things before we even jump into the publishing you may as well do is go ahead and create your image assets. I've created myself a logo that is 150 by 150, a small logo which is 30 by 30, um, a splash screen which is 620 by 300, and a, this is required for Game Salad, um, which is the snap view image that will appear whenever I snap my game to the side, and it will pause the game, essentially. This is the way that Game Salad is, is exporting the games at this time. And then we have our store logo and our screenshot. So these logos, or these images here, are ones that will actually appear uh, on the user's computer at various times, you know, obviously the logo on the start screen or the splash screen whenever they actually launch their their game. And then the store logo and the screenshot are assets that are used whenever a user views your logo or views your game either on the web or in the um, Windows Store app on, uh, on a Windows 8 device. Uh, and the screenshot is obviously uh, part of the description. So I've actually already created these image assets myself. So I've got my snap screen, my logo, uh, my small logo, my splash screen, and my uh, store logo. And then I will walk through how we get these other, this other info uh, here in a second. So let's go ahead and go back. Give this guy a nickname. And this is just for the Game Salad uh, platform's uh, left sidebar there. That, doesn't, that does not appear in my Windows Store app. 
But first thing I'm gonna do is give it a short name. This uh, appears on the logo whenever I um, whenever I have the game on my start screen. Uh, my game does not access the internet, but if I if it did, I would need to provide a provi uh, privacy policy. And I'll go ahead and point to my generic one. Uh, if you do need a privacy policy, you can find one in the cookbooks of uh, from Game Sellers Tutorials. And my customer support URL uh, is just my website. All right. Next thing we have is our display name. Now this is important, and this needs to match the the name whenever we uh, generate our our app package, uh, and we want to sign our application on a Windows 8 device. Um, this this name also has to match the name that we reserve in the Windows Store. And for that reason, I recommend at this point we move over to our Windows Store and we go ahead and reserve our name. So I'm going to go to WindowsStore.com. I'm going to click up here in the right-hand side, visit the Dev Center. I was already signed in, so it automatically signed me in. But I'm going to go to the dashboard and, and reserve a new app name. Click on Submit an App in the left-hand side. And here, let's see if this is available. Awesome. So my app, uh, Cannon Fodder, is available. And just a little uh, heads up here, I now have this name for up to a year. Uh, names are unique in the Windows Store, so no one else can uh, reserve or submit an app using this exact display name uh, in the Windows Store. So if you're currently working on a game and you want to maintain uh, branding across all the platforms, uh, you may want to go ahead and register in the Windows Store and reserve that app name. Um, you know, knowing that you will uh, that you will release an app in the store as soon as you can test and certify and all those good things. Okay, but I have Cannon Fodder here, so that is good. I can go back over here, and this can remain my display name. Uh oh, looks like I have a. Hmm. Okay. Um. Looks like the short name is limiting me to thirteen characters. I don't think that'll cause a problem whenever I um export. Uh, the display name is the one that needs to match the actual the actual uh, app package that you upload and the reserve name that you have in the Windows Store. All right, so here I can change some things about how my actual tile appears, um, what, what color my foreground text is. I have a very light logo, so I'm going to change my foreground text to dark. I do want to show the app name because um, I don't have the app name actually in the image asset for the logo, or my logo is not recognizable enough without the name. Now I can go ahead and start loading things up. So I have these on my desktop under cannon fodder. There's my logo. There's my small logo. Let's grab my splash screen. And again, it really helps to go ahead and create all of these image assets um, ahead of time so you can just really get through this publishing process as quickly as possible. Um, if I want to here, I can change the the background color of my of my uh, splash screen. So rather than being black, I'm gonna make it all white. Um, I could also make it match this blue color. I'm not gonna open up Photoshop or, or another image program and figure out what that what the hex value of that blue is. And then the snap view image. Again, this is a game style specific thing that is going to um, whenever I pause my game and, and snap it to the side, this is the image that will appear. Change this to white as well. And I will top align that just in case it is uh, uh, taller than 768. 
Great. So here's where we have a lot of confusion about how to actually, um, which what are these values for our Windows 8 app package? Now these values are not important until we actually want to um, um, until we actually want to upload to the store. But since that is what we're doing here, I do want to uh, call each one of these, these out. So we re we reserved our app name, and one of the, is one of the first things I could do is I can go to Advanced Features, and if I go to Push Notifications and Connection, I can get my app identity. Um, So here I can get my uh, publisher name, and we we only want the the value um, after the CN equals. So that's my publisher ID. My package name is this guy. And for my publisher display name, I can go back to my, my dashboard and I can click on my account. Authenticate that I am me again. And you see here I have my publisher display name, which for me is my just my name. But you may have a, a pseudonym or you may have a you know a DBA that that you work under, a business name that you work under. Okay. So here I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my version number. Um, what I would this this is just whatever the version number of your app, so maybe this is not the uh, the final version and um, you want to have it as 0.9 or or whenever you do release an update, you can increment this number so that it's 1.0.0.1, you know, any of those things. All right, my last image upload. Choose the store logo. And there we go, that's it. Um, so one other quick call out. Find, currently finding the package name and the publisher ID seems a little uh, more difficult than it needs to be and uh, just a quick explanation on that. Typically whenever we're building out our applications from um, from Visual Studio itself, you know these values are automatically inserted into what's called the package AppX manifest. And so that's what is when we create a new project in a Visual Studio, that's what's happening for us. Using the game style tool and them and them creating and, and generating the app package for us, we have to kind of manually tell it what these values would be. So that's that's a little explanation of where those uh, values come from. But we're done now. We have everything we need to do to actually generate our app package. So I'm going to go ahead and click generate app. And that's it for now. The next podcast or the next screencast I do will cover. Um, side loading sign uh, to test and to sign on our uh, Windows 8 uh, device so I'll test it on both my Surface and my Windows 8 uh, Pro uh, laptops and thank you hopefully this has been helpful